Hi, my name is Kelsey, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do problem number 6 from the 2006 Calc BC FRQ. So to start off, let's look at the information that they give us. They tell us that the function f is defined by the power series f of x equals this for all real numbers x for which the series converges. The function g is defined by the power series, as seen here, for all real numbers x for which the series converges. So for part A, the first thing they want us to do is to find the interval of convergence of the power series for f and to justify our answer. And the method we use to do this is the ratio test, which states that if the ratio of the n plus 1th term over the nth term is less than 1, then the um, series converges. So now we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. of this nth plus 1 term divided by the nth term. And if you remember earlier from the given information, the nth term is given by that. So now I'm just going to fill this ratio. And this is going to be divided by so just to make this look a little bit better I'm going to rewrite it And x to the n plus 1 is the same thing as x to the n times x, so I'm just going to write it like that so it's easier. And here we have some cancellation, so these two x to the n's are going to go, and these negative ones are going to go, and this one, negative one, doesn't matter because it's a net absolute value. So now what we have is the limit as n goes to infinity of um, n plus 1 squared x over n, n plus 2. And so since the limit as n goes to infinity here is going to equal absolute value x, we know that the absolute value of x has to be less than 1, so x must be somewhere between negative 1 and 1. And we're not done yet here because we still have to test these endpoints and of course justify the answer. So now I'm going to plug um, negative 1 in for x. And so we know that the series from 1 to infinity is that. And now we can just test whether or not this um, converges or diverges. And what we are going to end up with is 1n over n plus 1. And the limit as n approaches infinity of this um, sequence here equals 1 which does not equal zero obviously, so this diverges by the divergence test. And so we know that this endpoint is not included. And now I'm going to do that again, but with plugging in one for x, because that was our other endpoint. And that's just going to go to that. And now the same thing here. When we do the limit as n approaches infinity of this a sub n,
So since this limit does not equal zero, this diverges by the divergence test. And the way that College Board writes it is that the series does not converge at x equals 1 and at x equals negative 1 um, because the limit of the individual terms is not 0, which is basically the same thing I did because I took the limit of the individual terms. Um, also, uh, just an important thing is the point setup for this. You get one point for setting up this ratio, uh, one point for comp computing the limit, and then you also have to identify the radius of convergence, which is 1. You have to consider both of these endpoints and then give an analysis and conclusion. Now for part B, they're asking us, um, given the graph of y equals f of x minus g of x passes through the point 0 comma 1, find y prime of 0 and y double prime of 0. Determine whether or not y has a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or neither at x equals 0. Give a reason for your answer. So to start off, I'm going to just compute f prime of x and g prime of x. So if you remember before, they gave us f, prime, f of x here and g of x here. So I just took the derivative, and it's right there. And now I'm going to evaluate at 0. So I get f prime of 0. And if you can see, there's going to be an x in all the terms following here. So when you plug in 0, they're just going all of the terms are basically going to cancel out. And so you're just going to be left with a negative 1 half. And now for g prime of 0, it's the same thing. All of these terms are going to go away because when you plug a 0 in, they're just going to turn to 0. And so we're left with this negative 1 over 2 factorial, which is the same thing as negative 1 half. Um, so if we're looking at this um, equation y, which equals f of x minus g of x, y prime of 0 is going to equal f prime of 0 minus g prime of 0. And the two of them are equal, so y prime of 0 is going to equal 0. Now we have to find y double prime of 0. And so then we have to take the second derivative of these two and evaluate it at 0. And just by looking at it, you can see that f double prime of 0 is going to equal 4 thirds. Because when you take the derivative, this x is going to go away. So this is going to be the only constant left over. Uh, and all the rest of the terms are going to equal 0 because when you plug 0 in for x, they'll just go away. And now g double prime of 0 is going to be this 2 over 4 factorial, which is the same thing as 1 12th because of the same reason as I stated for f prime of x. And so then in that case, y double prime of 0 is going to equal 4 thirds minus 1 12th. And it doesn't matter. Uh, now we can see that y is going to have a relative minimum at x equals 0 because um, y prime of 0 equals 0 and y double prime of 0 is greater than 0. And the reason why that would procure a relative minimum is because um, the slope of the equation is at 0 at this point and it is going to be concave up as given by the fact that uh, the second derivative is greater than 0. So it's going to be concave up like that. So that would therefore procure a minimum. And the point setup for this problem, it's going to be four points. You're going to get one point for evaluating this correctly, one point for evaluating that correctly, and then one point for your conclusion, which is going to be the relative minimum part, and then one point for this reasoning, which is that. I hope this video was helpful, and if you want any extra practice on uh, similar problems on past AP tests, uh, you can pause the video here and see there are all of these problems. It's usually number six that are very similar and are going to give you more um, practice with these concepts. And then also for form B of the FRQs, these are other numbers.